minorities. Mm -hmm. You know, a polyglot boarding house for the world. The people who have nothing at stake uh, with with the future or the past in America. I think it's it, it, it again. It was. I just finished the book this afternoon. It was a spine chilling read, and uh, I, I, I congratulate you for, again, bringing this out. The book is called State of Emergency, Patrick Buchanan, The Third World Invasion and Conquest of America. Uh, Mr. Buchanan, who are the forces that are, are driving this uh, neoconservative motion in this country that uh, seems to identify with this open uh, policy? Well, the, one of the primary forces are the transnational corporations. Of, of the 100 most powerful economic entities on Earth, only half are nations. Half are now corporations. I mean, you get a giant uh, uh, a Japanese bank, and that's bigger than Belgium or, or uh, some city states and things like that. And so these giant corporations want to create a new world where all borders basically vanish for all intents and purposes and disappear so that they can uh, shut down factories in this place and open them in that place and move people around freely, and nation states don't interfere with what they are about. The World Trade Organization is structured to benefit these corporations and their, and their executives and shareholders. And the purpose of, of these corporations is basically, I think, to get rid of their American workers and to hire cheap foreign labor so they reduce their uh, costs and they continue to export free of charge to the United States. And so they want to drive this uh, and these borders. But Senny Fox wants to erase the border for obvious reasons. He wants to ease pressure on his government by pushing his people, his poor and his unemployed, and, uh, into the United States. The labor unions see in all these uh, uh, illegal aliens potential new union members in the service industries. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they see it. The, 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 the churches see new, uh, new parishioners in the pews. The president is concerned about uh, losing the Hispanic vote if he gets down and enforces the law and being cut off by the business roundtable in the Chamber of Commerce who want amnesty not only for the illegal aliens they hire, but for the uh, businesses that hire them. Mm -hmm. So there's all these tremendous economic forces, as well as the guilt in which this generation has been marinated over the alleged crimes of Western civilization, how horrible and beastly we were to third world peoples, that it, it, it makes them just paralyzed when someone calls them a racist or a xenophobe or a nativist and says, uh, well, you have no right to keep us out of the United States. This is a nation of immigrants, and we have a right to be here. And they go into a paralysis. <clears throat> that, that is what's so amazing, because our, our leadership never used to react that way. They, 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 would, they would move swiftly and... and uh, unapologetically, unapologetically and decisively. And, and, and those who would say that this, you know, to shut our borders down overnight, let's say, or within the course of weeks or months would, would have uh, some sort of enormous impact on commerce or, or uh, lifestyle here, I just, I just find that hard to believe that we can't do that and just, you know, see what happens uh, and then take another, you know, reassess the situation once we seal our borders. After all, in the wake of 9-11, um, isn't that, you know, where it starts in our own backyard for national security reasons? For, for heaven's sakes, border security is homeland security. Mm -hmm. I mean, how can you defend your front yard and your front door and leave the backyard and back door open if you're going to secure your family? You, you've taken a lot of criticism for this book for really, you know, stating uh, what I think is the obvious and things that need to be said. But, uh, you know, you, you get labeled as a racist. And, and I mean, there, there, there are a lot of competing forces out there that would want to paint you as being somebody who's, you know, off his, off his rocker. Uh, <laughs> well, the point is, well, sure they do. Look, if they, they, they don't want to answer the arguments. They don't want the people to read the book. So what they do is they call me a name in the hope that instead of people discussing what I've got to say, people will be intimidated. They won't read what I have to say. And other people will, instead of focusing on the argument and focusing on the economic treason of some of these people and the actual treason of them and, and leaving the borders open or desiring an end to the country we love, they will. Uh, the, the argument will come around and turn around on whether Pat Buchanan's a bad person. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about what your plan is for uh, trying to uh, halt this, uh, aside from building a fence um, and just sealing the borders. There are some other aspects to your plan sure, for to regain a, control here. I just think we need, just like we had a 40-year moratorium on immigration, another new moratorium on immigration, 10 years at least. Well, we begin to get this under control. Then you build a security fence. Then you begin to prosecute these businesses, especially the ones that hire 
hundreds or thousands of illegals and do it chronically and continually. Make the big executives take the perk walk, find them, find the companies, put these guys in orange jumpsuits and have them down there, you know, mixing cement on the border for the security fence. And then you do another Proposition 187 and cut off all social welfare to illegal aliens, period. Mm -hmm. I know it's tough, except for emergency medical services. Then you tell all these folks who come in here to have their babies and make them American citizen de facto that that scam is over. The 14th Amendment does not apply because they are not under the jurisdiction of the United States if they're here illegally or if they're here as a tourist or if they're here as a diplomat. Mm -hmm. So that scam is put an end, with, end to. And I think you do these things and you, you cut back on, on legal immigration you tell someone who's here legally, and he says, I want to bring the family, you say, fine, your wife and your kid's under 18. But mom and pop and the brothers and sisters get in line. Mm -hmm. and, and just frankly, just be tough. Yeah. I'm not talking about brutal or cruel. Just be tough about defending the security and the survival, in my judgment, of this nation. What I, what I find just amazing, and I guess I'm just, you know, I'm having an awakening, and, and I have been for a few months now, but uh, the, to find out that uh, in the aftermath, first of all, of 9-11, this hasn't been done immediately, but to find out that this has been going on for so many years now uh, that we don't have any type of border security is just, to me, it's just mind-boggling. Um, well, sure. I mean, how could you, I mean, how can you say your, your borders are secure when you have... We think 12 million is the best figure I can use. And Bear Stern says they think it's 20 million illegal aliens. And you got, you've got even al-Qaeda types saying we can always get into America through the back door. And, uh, and no one knows how many are here. And, you know, 80,000 have been ordered, deported, who disappeared, who had criminal records. They disappeared, 6,000 for grave crimes. And, and the president himself said, and I quote him right in there in Tucson, you know, that, that three out of four of the folks who came in from countries other than Mexico, we had a catch-and-release policy as late as last year, whereby you catch them at the border, and then you turn them loose into the population. Mm -hmm. And he said we, we've had to turn loose rapists and murderers and others. Well, why didn't they change the law? Right, exactly. And where, when the president had his bully pulpit, where was he on leadership there? Uh, he exactly. would have been the perfect you know, president to, to do that. Any, and I'm not considered hard on the president, but all I want is you know, just do his, do his duty, secure the border. That's all we're asking. Does, do we have the right to determine, I mean, and should we uh, exercise our right to determine how this country is made up um, as sure far as peoples, I mean, you know? It's like adopting children. I mean, I have friends that adopt, went to China to adopt children. Others adopt, uh, you know, kids uh, here in the United States. Others adopt black kids. And uh, we, we are the ones who decide who should come, not they. This is our country, after all. This is our home. Mm -hmm. And we're all of us descended, obviously, from some people who came here from somewhere. It might be in the 18th century or the 19th or the 20th century. But once we are citizens, we are members of this political body, and we are members of this national family, and we decide who comes and when. We are a nation of God-fearing men, uh, at least when this all started, who agreed that it was best to keep God out of government. It didn't mean that we didn't recognize the existence of God or that we should be a godless nation. And I think many people in this country are fearing the loss of their identity and their religion uh, because of you know what's this multicultural sensation that's sure. happening here in America. And it, it's really, for a lot of people, it's, it does spell the end of, of their lives, or uh, uh, their their nationalities as they know them, their, well, you know, their, their personas. Pat Moynihan, Pat Moynihan was a liberal Democrat, and he, he said two things constitute the nation, an ethno-cultural core, and for us that would be predominantly European and Christian, in other words, a Western nation. And he also said the second thing was the belief that we are all descended from the same ancestors. In other words, even though our roots might be in Ireland or Germany or Scotland or, or back in, uh, in Africa or somewhere in uh, Eastern Europe or even in Asia, that the father of our country is George Washington and that the fathers of our country are the men who made the revolution and who made the Constitution and that this is the history we study. This is our family history now because we are a new people. We are entirely new people. And many of us, we are, are, we're, we're the children of adopted Americans, adoptive Americans, but we are Americans. And if we don't understand these things, 
and we simply uh, and 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 we don't understand what it is that has held us together, and that alone can hold us together. We won't remain together. Let me uh, stop you there because I did want to shift gears. By the way, the, the book "State of Emergency: The Third World Invasion and Conquest of America" by Patrick J. Buchanan, and I would recommend it wholeheartedly. It is fantastic reading. But uh, while we're on the subject, and I think this is interrelated, the Pope's comments the other day, which I think were calculated. Uh, I think he is taking a leadership position, trying to to point out that there is a divide here. That we, we there is a faith, the Muslim faith, that is inherently radicalized. Um, I don't know whether there is such a thing as a moderate uh, Muslim or not by the reading of the Quran. Uh, can you be both? Well, the, the, Pope, uh, the Pope certainly raised, raised a very valid question, and the very reaction to his commentaries I think indicates that he has an extremely valid point, an issue that's got to be addressed. And he did quote the, the 14th century emperor by saying that he had the emperor who was had been under Turkish assault in, in Constantinople, had said, you know, the earlier surahs, or, or the area, earlier statements of Muhammad, had said that coercion has no place in religion. But the later said, we, uh, we have to expand the faith by the sword. Mm -hmm. And he saw a conflict between these two, and of course he did that quote, the emperor saying that, that he had, saw Islam as contributing nothing to Christianity, except that which was evil and inhuman, which is the point that set off uh, the mullahs and the ayatollahs and all the rest. But the Pope's fundamental point in this is that, uh, that, that force and reason are in conflict. And we see in the Islamic faith a, a will or a disposition to use force to expand the faith and maintain the faith, mm -hmm. and this is inconsistent with, frankly, the nature of God himself, which is pure reason, that God does not wish force to be used. And so all of these, and then you see the, the Islamic country, so he said, and basically, is there something endemic or integral to Islam uh, that, uh, that condones violence and force? And then to see, after he raises these questions, people calling for his execution and beheading... <laughs> And suggest, I know. That, you know, maybe he had a point. Yes, exactly. And then you got the fellow in Afghanistan that converted to Christianity, one person, and virtually everybody in the country said, "Yeah, we got to behead him." And so, uh, is I mean, what are we talking about? I mean, is there a compatibility uh, between the faiths? The way you've worked it out here in America, where you have, uh, you know, the the faiths basically compete by preaching and proselytizing, and some rise and others fade. Uh, or is it legitimate to use the sword and the power of the state to impose faith and to punish, prosecute, and execute the uh, disbelievers or apostates or heretics? So this, all this was what the Holy Father was talking about and the inconsistency of this with what he thought was the true nature of God. And, uh, and frankly, it's a very, very powerful and provocative sermon. That's a, that's a topic for another show, Patrick. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have. I, I didn't want to get you down that road. Unfortunately, I you did. did. Unfortunately, you dragged me down there. <laughs> I'm sorry. Perhaps we can talk again about this in some other show. Okay. Fine. Thanks again for being my guest today. That's going to do it for adult content. We'll see you again tomorrow. Thanks for joining me. Good night. Yeah, well... <laughs>